Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Stan. This is going to be a reading for um, Virgo for January 2019. Um, I've laid the cards out and spent some time receiving the messages from the cards already. Um, I'm actually having a hard time communicating the message to you today. I've tried to record it several times and I'm just having a hard time um, expressing what it is I'm seeing in the cards today. Um, because despite you know, I, I know all of the traditional meanings of the cards, but when I lay out a spread, um, a story just comes out of the cards and speaks to me, and it's not always um, in alignment with the actual meaning of the cards. It can stray quite a bit. Um, and as much like this, you know, the opening card here, the Wheel of Fortune, uh, what I was drawn to today with this card was the... Um, the woman's dress and I was looking at it and thinking about how heavy that dress would be and how uncomfortable and how what a nuisance these sleeve these long long sleeves would be she looks just really uncomfortable it's really inconvenient um, so as much as I kept trying to back out and you know look at take in the whole meaning of the card I just kept coming right back to her dress it was jumping out at me and then the second card out um, just verified the same thing. I kept trying to, I kept trying to look at her and think of her, you know, as this independent, successful woman, um, in, you know, ha uh, has acquired everything, you know, she could ever want, she, very independent, but I just kept noticing how uncomfortable her dress is like, a, you know, wearing a corset, um, you know, and this, uh, all this on her head and neck. And um, so, so the two of them, I'm just thinking like, I bet they would, really just like to wear something comfortable and then this the same thing with the high priestess usually you know i don't pay so much attention to what she's wearing but with the you know the three of these together the first three cards out i just couldn't stop noticing the the dresses of these women so um the message seemed to be coming out about uh you know public face about uh, tradition, about what is expected, about playing your role, fitting in where you should, um, but not really being the truth of who you are, of course. So, you know, um, how you present yourself to the world um, in, in a respectful, proper manner, um, but may not be the truth for you. And you're starting to really become aware of this and become uncomfortable with it. Um, the other, the other meaning I was getting from these three cards, <clears throat> you know, this one here, I just was thinking that, she, you know, she's on this wheel and she's saying to these guys, you know what, I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to jump off here. I don't want to play this game anymore. She's kind of done. I just see her like jumping down and like exiting the scene, like pulling off her blindfold and saying, game over. I'm out of here. Um, same with this woman. I started to see this as like a corn maze. These here is like a, she was entering a maze and I was getting the vision of um, the movie The Shining when the woman finally decides that she's had enough and she flees and she's out into the, into the, um, the maze. And, you know, they're supposed to spend the winter there in that hotel, but she's just, she bails early. It's like, it's like they're leaving their contracts. They're, they're jumping ship. Um, same with the high priestess. She kind of looks like a little bit like a bride here. Um, like, like maybe one getting cold feet or regretting her decision. She's kind of rethinking the, the contract of marriage. So, um, you know, all three cards having the same meaning of, um, restriction, contracts, um, and just desiring freedom. So, um, but the high priestess also has a, another meaning. He, she goes with this guy here. You know, once you jump out, of, once you jump off the wheel and you walk out of the contracts, this is what you're faced with. Um, the high priestess, she's like the gatekeeper to the subconscious or, you know, the, the veil. You get past her and you get to see what's beyond the veil. And what's beyond the veil is this guy, he's like the librarian of the, like the Akashic Records. He's like the, the record keeper of everything that's come before. So it's almost like if these are all your past lives here, 
you know, this may be your, your next one that that's you're, you know, getting ready to jump into next or, you know, and kind of back to the drawing board type, type feeling like, um, let's go back to where it all began and, and re-examine this whole deal. That kind of a feeling. And then the Queen and King of Swords came out together, which, you know, right away you would think um, some kind of power couple or, um, but really quickly I noticed their, the throne that they're sitting on and the, the fact that she's turned and he's, she's in profile and he's head on. It almost looked to me like, um, like a sculptor's wheel, you know, when they, they can spin the wheel to see it from all perspectives. It almost looked like the same the same figure from a different view, like it was being spun. So it was like, it's like seeing, um, you know, examining the, examining the truth of who you are from all perspectives, like on a, like on a sculptor's wheel and realizing that it's, you know, even though it seems like it's stone, it's cast in stone, it's really, uh, you know, something that you can, that can shape shift, that you can create yourself, that you can alter. Um, so, you know, this real sense of kind of like going back to the drawing board, being, you know, being the creator of the contract, being the creator of your experience. Um, so this here I see as you, um, having visited the records, received your, um, box, your archives, it's like the, here, here you go. Here's the, the record of everything you've done before this and you, um, spend some time going through it and absorbing it all and thinking about it and, you know, pulling out the value of each thing um, and realizing that what you need to do, you know, if these, if all these pentacles and all of these cards, you know, are past light, like she's kind of walking away from the, the, the karmic contracts of, um, you know, the past, going back to where these things get created, reevaluated. These are like, I see all these pentacles as, as past contracts, past lives, past contracts. Um, so what's interesting is what came after that was the star and the star, of course, she's completely naked. So she's freed herself from the confines of the, um, costumes that she'd been wearing before. And the amazing thing is that this star is of course in all these pentacles. It's like what the core of the pentacle is this star, except you lose the confining, defining ring around the outside. It breaks open. So you, you have the core of, of your truth here completely free of the binds of the contract. Um, so, you know, completely stripped of outer appearance, the, the necessity to have a, a concern for appearances, uh, completely free from the wheel, you know, it, and it's just repeated here again, right? The, the confines of the circle, the pentacle, but at the star here, you, you're finding the way past that you're finding it's like when you go, when you get right to the heart of things, you lose the limitations. So, um, so then what happens next? You get to the point where you step off the karmic wheel. You find, you go back to the Akashic Records. You find out who you are. You see things from all these new perspectives. You pull out the core essence of who you are and what do you do with it? And... Um, you know, I'm getting this, the confining energy that you, that you've fled. Um, I see here that, uh, it's, it's like, it's, uh, all of the past lives and contracts and karma and everything that you've been through. It's like, it's uncomfortable intentionally because, um, the discomfort that it's like knowing that you're uncomfortable is at some point going to get you to break free of it. That's the point. It's like to make you more and more uncomfortable so that at some point you finally say, I've had enough and you step out of the whole thing. Um, so you step out and you know, you're because you're meant to blaze a trail, break free from the pack, you know, be the leader, 
create new things. Um, you know, but that like that that energy, that trailblazing energy, is kind of um, bracketed by this. You know, a little bit of fear, a little bit of like uncertainty, not sure. You know, you're taking this path. You're following the the trailblazing path, but you don't really know where it's going to lead you. So, um, you know, you're feeling that discomfort. And the last card that I got was the lovers, which of course we all know the traditional meaning of the lovers. Well, the original tradition, like real, uh, source meaning of this card is choice. Um, and so I was looking at this thinking like, how does this how does this complete the story that we're looking at today? And I realized that, you know, you, you're you free, you're completely blazing a trail, but at, in a sense, you're still, um, you're still looking at the options in front of you, trying to make a choice. So this may be where you're getting hung up a little bit, because you're looking at um, what's in front of you going, where do I go next? What can I do now that I, now that I know more of who I am? I have a sense of, you know, I've stepped out of all the confines of the past and I'm completely free to make a new choice, but you're still maybe um, looking at the things that are in front of you and thinking you must choose. It's like, it's like surveying the landscape and saying, you know, what, what out there am I going to do next? But really um, all of that is part of, of the wheel. Everything that's in front of you, everything that you see in your reality is still part of the wheel. Um, and what's coming next is this energy coming in from like a completely other, it's like, this is, this card is the confines of, of your contract. What's needed is this new, completely new energy to come in. And it has nothing to do with anything that you've ever seen or experienced before. Um, so this is where it gets really hard to communicate the message because I was getting a lot of stuff about because I kept feeling like all of these um, characters, they want to almost like walk off the cart. They want to like jump out of the cards completely. They don't want to, so the, like the tarot cards themselves are confining. The messages in the cards themselves are confining because although, um, you know, the a picture's worth a thousand words and that kind of a, of a thing, the pictures are still only, uh, they can only be pictures of things that we know already. So you could, language is only constructed of uh, words that we're already aware of. There, the, but there's, a, there's something completely new now. If you step outside of this card, there's something beyond language and beyond uh, imagery and the ability to even communicate what it is that's coming in. It's like it's so new that it's... It doesn't exist in this reality yet. It's it's a completely new thing. So um, that's the message of the day. I hope that it resonates with somebody. Um, thank you. Bye.